Okay, I will call to order the special meeting of the Federal Way City Council for January 18th of 2022. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, for the record, we've got uh, Councilmember Tran, who is appearing um, uh, via Zoom. And uh, also, uh, uh, Councilmember Sefa Dawson is out of the country and um, uh, not available at this time. Uh, but her absence is excused. And uh, we'll do that again during the regular meeting. Uh, with that, we're here for a special study session regarding the downtown uh, federal right redevelopment of Town Center 3, 21st Avenue South and beyond. And um, uh, action is anticipated, as noted on the agenda. Uh, we'll have a staff report from Brian Davis, our Community Development Director, Keith Niven, our Planning Manager, and Cheney Skadson, uh, Associate Planner. Brian? Okay. Thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. It's good to be with you tonight to talk about redevelopment of our downtown. Uh, I want to make a quick connection point before we go into the details of the presentation between what we have previously discussed with the Council and what we'll be presenting with tonight. And what we previously discussed is, we, is the council has set aside funds for downtown redevelopment. They set aside $100,000 in the biennial budget for downtown. We subsequently sat down with members of the council to identify what exactly um, their vision was for downtown redevelopment because it is a broad area if we, depending on what, what uh, borders you define as our downtown. And through the brief discussions that we had uh, with the council, we found that the, the, the desires at the time of the council members was um, consistent with our current comprehensive plan for downtown redevelopment. And so we sat down as a team to try and uh, figure out what would be the most effective use uh, for your consideration in spending that money for downtown redevelopment. And we believe uh, that uh, that the best use of funds at this time is, uh, in effect, less talking and more doing uh, with regards to downtown redevelopment. And so what you'll see tonight is some, some action items, some things that would really transform uh, a portion of our downtown for uh, what we believe is an exciting uh, start to uh, our downtown becoming a, a place, uh, a pl place making that the council desired and uh, for people to have in their minds when they think of Federal Way, something unique and a, a place for them to come to, for them to get off of the future light rail, and for them to spend time uh, in our downtown, and perhaps in the future to even live and work uh, in the downtown as well. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Planning Manager Keith Niven and Associate Planner Cheney Skatson. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council President Coach Mar, Deputy Mayor uh, Honda, and the rest of the council members. Um, before I start talking about um, Federal Ways Downtown, I wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about downtowns uh, in general. And uh, to get you guys um, thinking along those lines, I wanted to share a little music video with you. So hopefully you appreciate this. And there's. There's a reason why I wanted to show you this, and I'll go into it when we're done. You can always go downtown when you've got worries, all the noise in the hurry seems to help. I know downtown, just listen to the music of the traffic in the city. Linger on the sidewalk where the neon signs are pretty. How can you lose? The lights are much brighter. Lights 
Exactly. All right. So, um, other than liking that song, uh, which I do, um, uh, the other purpose is that song was originally released in 1965. Uh, in 1965, downtowns were the place that people were. There, that's where the department stores were. That's where the the community gathering places were. That's where. Um, that's where people kind of got together. It's, it's where the big department stores were, the, the restaurants. Um, and so, you know, then what happened is, um, Jason, I need a little bit more help. Yeah. There we go, sorry. Um, and then what happened is in the late 60s, uh, there was civil rights movements. Um, downtowns became uh, disinvested in a lot of places across our country. And um, this study, um, I like data, um, this study on the right-hand side from Brookings Institute kind of really shows those population trends. And what's interesting to me is not only did downtowns become somewhat stagnant um, in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, um, but that trend was different in Western US cities and as you can see, our trend line um, in the West was much more consistent, um, and I find that super interesting. But one of the things that demographers found after the uh, 2008 recession was people wanted to live in downtowns again. Um, and that video that I showed you, <laughs> the remake of that song from 1965 was done in 2011 by the Saw Doctors uh, after downtowns became kind of hip again. And so all of those things I think are important to us talking about why are we interested in a downtown. Somebody asked me, well, why should Federal Way concentrate on a downtown? And the answers are fairly simple for me. Um, one is downtowns represent kind of the heart and soul of a city, of a community. And to have one, I think, provides that place for community gathering for that culture and that vibrancy that most cities are looking for, but it also creates an identity. And as Federal Way wants to create and have that identity in Puget Sound, I think it relies on having a downtown. So there was a study done in 2005 by the University of Wisconsin. It identified that successful downtowns are beloved by their citizenry. Uh, there's broad public and private investment. They are walkable and they have the three R's retail, restaurants, and uh, residential. Thank you. So the policy questions uh, this evening. Number one, should the RFP for TC3, and TC3 is the property we own east of the PAC, uh, the old Target building, uh, proceed? And number two, would the council support bringing forward an agenda bill for additional funding for a feasibility study and traffic modeling to see if there's a reasonable non-motorized solution for crossing South 320th. Um, I can give you a, my first meeting I went to in Federal Way when I started last uh, March was LUTC in April. And I can vividly remember a question that Council President Coach Marr asked Ryan Medlin, who was giving a sound transit update. How do we get people across 320th? Um, you know, should there be a bridge? And staff replied, studies show that pedestrians will not go up a flight of stairs, across a bridge, and down a flight of stairs if they can go straight across. And that's true. And so the question is, is, is there another solution that we can find? So the financial impact for these two questions this evening, number one, the RFP for TC3 is already funded in the current budget. Number two, the feasibility study and modeling is expected to cost 250. As Brian mentioned earlier, there's already $100,000 that was budgeted to community development for downtown. So an additional $150,000 would be needed to fund this work. So we're gonna go through three parts to the presentation tonight fairly quickly. Uh, number one is uh, a massing analysis. Um, part two was improving walkability. And then part three is the city-owned TC3 property. All right, so here's some, uh, here's some context for you guys. 
On the left-hand side is our city center. It's 409 acres, and you can see an aerial photograph as it sits today. And then on the right-hand side, for comparison, it's downtown Bellevue. And downtown Bellevue is about 406 acres, so they're about the same size. And you can see a picture of what downtown Bellevue looks like. And as we talk about down, downtown, um, 406 acres or 409 acres, that's a lot of land. Um, and it's about two-thirds of a square mile. And when you're getting down to talking about a fine-grained detail of walkability and urban design, doing it at 400 acres is hard. So the first thing uh, we started talking about was a smaller geography. And you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see MG2 on some of these slides uh, this evening. MG2 is uh, a Seattle consulting firm and home to architects, designers, and strategists who plan and design environments that foster wellness, community, and long-term growth. MG2 looks beyond conventional interpretations of development to provide beautiful, high-performance solutions that enrich life at every scale, fostering meaningful connections. In MG2, um, the reason why they're working with us, not for us, we do not have a contract with MG2. Um, Cheney and I went to a half-day uh, conference in Seattle on TOD in the suburbs, and it was really to focus on uh, Kirkland and Redmond, and ended up striking up a conversation with one of the panelists, dropped Federal Way a lot, like you're supposed to do, market your city when you're outside the city, and uh, they became interested in our city, um, and they volunteered to do some work for us to help move this conversation along. So I want to thank Mitch Pride from MG2 is here. I want to thank his firm for the time they put in to help us have this conversation tonight. So as we talk about geography, what you see on this map is the red outline um, is a different geography than our city center. It is a smaller geography. It's about 70 acres. And the way we determined um, that geography was uh, we wanted to be in close proximity of walking distance to the sound transit station, which is going right where my mouse is, um, on the west side of 23rd. And so, and, and, and the other thing is, um, if you look at who owns the property, sound transit owns all this property, the city owns all this property, you have one property owner owns this, one property owner owns this, and then the commons is owned by a single property owner. So within this geography, you have a very few number of variables in terms of how it's gonna develop over time. So this massing analysis, basically what it does is you put a bunch of buildings um, on vacant property and underdeveloped property to start to see what this is gonna possibly look like as it redevelops. So this diagram here is really intended to start a conversation about if things got built out and you put a bunch of buildings where they aren't now, what can this geography start to look like? And from there, you start to say, okay, where are people walking, right? So as you can see from this diagram, the biggest circle is the train station. And you can see the pack is up here, the commons is down here. And the way we looked at this is you really have this north-south spine starting to develop. If there's, if there's a destination use happening in the TC3 property, and we know people are gonna walk to the Target and the Amazon Fresh and the other stores that are gonna be down in the commons, and so as you start to create this north-south spine and the train station, you can start to envision how people are gonna use this space once it redevelops, okay? And looking at it, again, at this, with this brighter lens, um, you start to see that 21st Avenue, which runs along here, starts to be this kind of feeder for people circulating through this neighborhood. And so, as, as you can see from this slide, um, MG2 suggested a couple different things. One is a Voonerf. Voonerf is a Dutch term what it means is a shared street. It's for cars and people and bikes, all to use the same surface. And it's accomplished through different pavers and different markings to help the motorists understand they're in a shared surface. 
The other would be creating like a boulevard, something that's a little bit more um, maybe uh, formalized, uh, but would also create a very different feel for this north-south spine. And as you see, kind of some of these side streets coming in from the sound transit surplus parcels that'll feed into this, it starts to create this network in here. And, you know, these other kind of east-west streets um, start to then potentially start to feel like residential streets. These start to become feeling like a neighborhood. There's some great um, residential urban neighborhoods. Um, my daughter goes to school in Philadelphia that I've walked around. They're, you know, three-step walk-up brownstone buildings that are just great. They're, they're really fabulous. And they're things that could happen here depending on the land uses and what ends up happening. So moving on to the second part of this, improve walkability. You know, as I said earlier, a successful downtown is walkable. And we have a seven lane road that's South 320th that provides a very important function for our city. It moves people from I-5 to their neighborhoods and back. And so you really can't get rid of the traffic. Um, so how do we improve pedestrians getting across 320th? So right now what you see on the right is what's planned. It's basically a two phase pedestrian crossing that would be signalized. You cannot get across the street in one signal. It's, it's too wide. So basically you cross half of it and then you wait for the next green cycle. And that's, that's what is currently on the books. Um, so what we've talked about is, is there a way to potentially get rid of the traffic without getting rid of the traffic? And how do you do that? Well, you take it down. So what's happening on 21st as you're coming southbound is the topography is actually dipping. So you can actu actually get over South 320th um, fairly naturally. You still are going to have to dip the road a little. And that actually does quite a bit for the noise. Um, when we were walking MG2 around this neighborhood talking about it, if you stand at this corner at 21st and 320th and try to have a conversation, you're yelling um, because the traffic noise is so loud. You get one block up and you can have a normal conversation because you're far enough away from the traffic. Same thing with dipping it. Not only are you removing the traffic as a barrier to pedestrians, but you're also creating a better environment for people to be on foot and on bike. So, so again, just an idea. We don't know if there's any fatal flaws. That's the problem with this is it's an idea and the only way to get to the next step is we have to investigate it and see if there's any reason why it couldn't be done and how much it would cost to actually do. Um, some of these ideas here you see on the right, um, this is Los Angeles, where they basically just took a street and painted polka dots and put umbrellas out onto it. Um, it, it they reclaimed it for people, um, and it's a, it was a fairly inexpensive solution to repurpose an existing street. And not saying we would do that for 21st, um, but either one of these choices would be a way to transform it from its current function into something that would be a little bit more pedestrian in nature. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Cheney to talk about TC3. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this here is a snapshot out of our comprehensive plan. This is a, a picture that was adopted in 2015, uh, and it is our, our downtown framework, our plan, what, what we think that, that might belong in our downtown. Well, 2015 was seven years ago, and a lot has changed, including the market. So with the... Um, we don't necessarily know if these are the best uh, uses that we need for our downtown. It's been seven years, or probably more, since the community has weighed in on these concepts. So um, we need to um, take another look, a deeper look, to uh, you know, and, and a da data-driven approach. Uh, so sorry, here's the process. Well, with a data-driven approach that's um, coupled with community involvement in a task force. Uh, we can take um, a, a, a much closer look 
and uh, build a foundation for what the community wants that's balanced with what the market can can bear. Um, if we, uh, in this process, we can have a predictable outcome and, and map out the approach of that concept and how to achieve it. So through this uh, TC3 plan, we take the concept of that last page and, and take a, diver, a, a much deeper look into what, um, what the community and the market wants and then um, find a way to balance that and come up with some site alternatives or site options into how this you know, seven acre lot can be developed. What should be there? And another thing that um, Keith mentioned was you know, those activity nodes. Um, right now, Downtown Federal Way closes at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. when the stores close. What uses do we want to be uh, around at a later time and have different you know, hours of operation or different levels of activity during the day and, and not just uh, you know, lights off at the end of the day? These are I, things or considerations that this uh, request for proposal would help us dive deeper into. Um, by the end of this maybe a year process, we would have a complete master plan that the community would have been well involved in and um, we can take that concept and, and make and, and identify a predictable outcome and then a map to achieve it. So the, the following steps once we have a master plan complete would be to issue a second RFP uh, to, to, to um, find a development partner and funding sources for, for uh, taking this concept and realizing it for our downtown. Uh, there's other alternatives that the city can consider at that time, but first we need to be able to take a much closer and much more detailed look um, to, to what uh, the best outcome for our community and for our downtown is. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity not only because it's a pretty, it's at the top of the hill, it's a, it's a great piece of real estate, but also it, it provides the city to be, um, to set the bar and kind of be the catalyst of change and, and to see what, uh, or to, to set the bar for the redeveloping parcels around um, and uh, influence how, how the downtown develops. I know we've gone through a lot tonight and a lot of different topics, but I, I want to leave you with one quote. Uh, before we maybe get into questions. The future is not completely beyond our control. It is, the work, it is the work of our own hands. That's from Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, thank you, and I will uh, wait for some questions and stop sharing. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Hodges. Thank you. So thanks for the information tonight. So this is really exciting because I've been, for years, I've been wanting a plan for downtown. But I'm concerned that we have had no public input at this point. And I realize that this plan, this would call for public input, but I'd like some public input now instead of later. And so I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. But I am excited that we are talking about downtown and we're talking about the target property and, and doing something with it because we've had it for several years and it has, you know, it has just sat there and we've paid money into it. So um, I'd also be interested in knowing the market value of the target property because I don't know that may, maybe we should have a developer purchase it and develop it. Maybe we shouldn't be developing it. So um, is, do you have an idea of what that property costs, the value of that property? So at this moment, I, I don't know what the value of the property is, but I think that is a pretty uh, predictable outcome from the RFP. So um, Deputy President Honda, good questions. Um, we don't know what the current value is of that property, and that is part of what the RFP would establish, um, is there would be an economist that would provide us with that updated value. Under no circumstances is it envisioned that the city would develop that property. Um, at least I don't have that, um, and I can't speak for the mayor, so my apologies, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we should not be in the development business. It's not what we do. Um, it's not our strength. Um, the idea of the RFP is really to find the highest and best uses that are both informed by an economist as well as by the community try to marry those two visions together, come up with a plan, and then find developers to 
purchase the property from us and develop those uses on that property um, under whatever plan it is and whatever terms the council would want to include in, say, a development agreement or a purchase and sale agreement that would go along with the property. So, so I, don't, I don't know that the city was <coughs> expecting we would lead any development um, efforts on the property. Uh, it would be more as a, as a land-owning partner. Okay. And I'd also be interested in, I, I can understand why you've, you've taken this small area to discuss for developing downtown, but we have a much bigger downtown. You know, we have the mall property, we have Belmore Park, which is <coughs> talked about redeveloping over years and years. We have a bigger area. It's, it's not it's just not this tiny area. So ideally, we would have a plan for, for more of the downtown instead of just this small area. Absolutely. And, and the problem is, you know, by sh at least in, in our opinion, as we started down this path, by shrinking the geography, you can take a much more detailed look at it block by block. You know, it feels to me, and because these blocks are adjacent to the transit station, we know the transit station's coming in 2024 or maybe 25, depending on delays. Uh, we know Sound Transit is, is in the process right now evaluating their property uh, for sale. Um, and so, you know, affecting and getting the vision tight for this sub-geography seemed like a good approach. So in, in my mind, in our minds, I think we were seeing a phased approach to the city center, starting here and working our way outward. As, as certain variables became kind of less variable, um, it seemed then you could take, say, okay, if this is gonna happen here, then what happens here what happens here and what happens here. Um, but to try and, and crystal ball the whole 400 <laughs> acres at once, um, I don't know that we're gonna get anything more useful than what's in the comp plan right now, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just don't think it's very actionable. Okay, All right, thank you. Okay, so the, this is what we'll do. We'll start at this end with Council Member Norton, then. Just go down and I'll be last. Okay, sounds good. Okay, then we'll do um, Council Member uh, Walsh and then Council Member Dovey. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you for your presentation tonight. Um, I just have a couple questions about the non-motorized crossing idea. So is that going to be um, part of what the, um, the consulting agency would be doing is figuring out the cost of that, including the area that, that you showed the map of, of you know, putting like multi-use residential units in and that kind of thing? So different consultants. Um, so the consultant that we would hire for TC3 would primarily just be looking at the city property and coming up with a land plan for that. Um, a separate consultant would look at the DIP um, because that's a transportation planning engineering company because you need to actually figure out the, the geometries of the DIP um, and, then, and then you have to model what if you're if we're gonna so at, at a minimum what's happening is where 21st hits 320th cars will no longer be able to get to 320th so so we have to do some traffic modeling to make sure that we don't break the rest of the system so so there's so there's a different consultant doing the dip specifically okay and then so will the consultant because I'm just concerned because I know what those kind of bridges and things that they end up costing quite a bit of money and then that has to get put into the yearly budget in the annual budget as well would they um, also be giving us an idea of how much additional funding that would cost to maintain that and everything that would be my expectation council member is um, right because the next question if the council decides that the dip is what we want to do uh, it needs to be added to our TIP um, and then it becomes one of our funding priorities. Now, it may be at the top of the funding priority or it may be at the bottom of the funding priority, but that's kind of the logical process it goes through if, if the city decides it wants to actually do that. So, so even, even if we decide that, yes, let's do the dip, 
then, then there has to be a whole other conversation along with all the other transportation funding priorities. Where does it fall? And when do we want it to be done? And that's a whole different conversation. Okay, I have, I well, just. It, it probably wouldn't come out of operating budget though. Okay. It might come out of capital or REIT but, or something. But other. after the capital, it would have to be in the operating budget. That's what I was asking about. Um, okay, so I have just a couple more questions. So I've been contacted by community members who don't understand why we get consultants and pay the amount of money that we're talking about paying to have um, a firm look into the development. So could you please explain why we need um, a consulting firm to plan the downtown area and why the city should spend that money? Just, you know, this is just as a, as a, I told someone that I'd, I'd ask that question for them. Sure. Um, and I think that's a great question. So in terms of the RFP for TC3, and I apologize for all the letters, um, you know, so having someone with development experience, having someone with real estate, commercial real estate, residential real estate experience, that's not experience that we have on staff. Um, so, you know, we have an asset and um, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda asked, what's it worth? Um, if I had to guess and throw a dart at a wall, um, I'm gonna guess it's worth somewhere north of $7 million. Um, but we, we want an expert to tell us what it's worth so that we know what our asset is and how we can best utilize that asset. So, so I think it's, it's getting expertise outside of city staff is the okay. reason why we use consultants. Okay, and then I'm gonna move on to my next question. So who would be the members of the task force? And then also who from the community would be giving input on this and how would they be chosen? And how can community members who are interested in participating apply to um, be a part of that? So that's kind of two questions. Who's on the task force and then who, are, who would be the community members? Like, how are they chosen? That's a great question, and I'm gonna um, start before answering that. that the task force, you know, there's, there's, there's two things kind of going on here. There's like the RFP, but this folds in really nicely to our comprehensive plan periodic update. How I started was with the picture from our 2015 adopted comprehensive plan. We're supposed to adopt, uh, adopt the, or update those every seven or eight years. And uh, we have to, we are now working on our update to this chapter, city center. And that's gonna be updated in June of 2024. The task force is gonna kind of shepherd that, uh, the update to that chapter. So the task force will overlook and be a part of um, a lot of the aspects to, the, to this chapter, which includes the TC3 property and also you know, the whole, the, the bigger geography. The task force is part of the, so a part of the comprehensive plan update to chapter seven, which is for city center. But who, ex who are the actual people sure. who are on the task force? Yes, I just wanted to lay down that context. The, the a complete task force isn't drafted yet. We, there will be um, community uh, pro property owners. Uh, there will be community members. There will be um, possibly members from our com some of our commissions. Um, it would be, if I, if I could. Uh, the membership would be determined, frankly, by this group, uh, by the council, and you know, by some. We'd probably get uh, suggestions. Well, the way we normally do task forces is we'll ask council. Uh, normally, what we would do, and this would be up to the council, we'd ask council council to submit several names, and then uh, the decision process would be really ultimately up to the council, the, the decision making body. And, and the task force is, you know, it's, it's one group, but there will be countless uh, community engagement opportunities um, that, it, that are, you know, periodic or, you know, uh, topic specific throughout the process of the whole comprehensive plan update. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Walsh. Yeah, uh, a few questions. First off, just with, with terminology, uh, TC3. Uh, town Center 3, is that just specifically the target prop property or what, what is the definition of TC3? Sure, yeah, TC3 is the parcel east of the pack, which includes the old target building. Okay, so if that's TC3, is there a TC1 and TC2? Yeah, or what, yeah. Uh, what, what are the TC4? TC TC1 is the preferred, I, I coined these phrases eight years ago. 
TC1 is the Performing Arts and Event Center. TC2 is the PAC. TC3 is the target. You, you said the same thing there. You What's said, that? You said TC1 is the Performing Arts and Event Center. TC2 the PAC. That's no, the I'm sorry. Thing. TC2 is the park. The park, okay. TC3 has always been target. TC4 was the property that was uh, was that adjacent, that, that property adjacent to the park, uh, uh, right next to where the parking, the Sound Transit parking garage is. And okay. that we, that's, that's been, uh, that's now going to be used for the uh, Sound Transit parking garage. Okay, all right. Okay, that, that uh, clears up that. Uh, one of, th this has kind of been touched upon some already, uh, but you're saying that you want to, that it's wisest to do just a small part of the time uh, planning. However, it seems like that what we do in that area is so dependent upon what happens with the Commons Mall area that, that uh, depending on what happens with the Commons Mall area will determine whether there's a need or a reason to do a, a pedestrian walkway over, over 320th. And so it seems like we're almost getting the, the cart ahead of the horse when we don't, you know, unless there is a good idea of what's, you know, I, basically an unquestionable uh, idea of what's going to happen with the, the Commons Mall property. I, I think that's a good question. I think that uh, there's a finite amount of land in our city center and our regional growth center, and we have expectations to plan for that. I think that um, we have, at, at this moment, we have the ability to influence and control what happens to TC3 and some other properties. We know what may happen with the Sound Transit parcels. Um, what I mentioned, you know, kind of setting the bar, uh, leading by example, the development of these downtown, these, this portion of downtown can help set the bar and be a catalyst and open the door for partnerships, for public and private partnerships. Um, in and terms I, of the development of the Well, and if I could, actually, there have been quite a number of discussions that, that have come up with regard to the ownership of the mall and the city staff. The long, there's a long-term lease between um, the uh, between Merlon Geyer, the owners of the mall, and Target. So that the Target property is pretty much locked in at their at their spot, and they had the opportunity. They were actually looking at the former Target site, the former Sears site. Um, and then they opted uh, to stay right where they are. They've invested a significant amount of money. Um, the Amazon Fresh, on the other end, is another uh, uh, long-term lease and a reuse of that property. What happens in between is actually uh, I want to talk to you, I want Brian to talk about the status of the, of the discussions we've had so far with Merlon Geyer and the city about what their thought about what happens between them. <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Mayor. So, yes, as the mayor mentioned, we have been in discussions with the mall property ownership about uh, redevelopment of the property, which they've intended will will happen, and has been evidenced by their um, uh, agreement with Amazon Fresh. Um, they also we've had discussions about how the rest of the property would uh, redevelop. Um, so, to your point of we don't know what's what's going to happen to it. Absolutely true, but we know that there's a it's a big enough property. It's in the middle of downtown that fronts on 320th and I-5. It, it's just property that simply is not going to go away or sit fallow. There's something that's going to happen to the property, and 320th is something that currently it's it's like a um, it's a it's a you know as Keith mentioned it's a seven lane highway. It effectively divides the downtown currently and we need to find a connection between the two downtowns effectively. And so, yes, we don't know what's gonna happen with the mall property, but we know something is going to happen. We're in discussions with them, and especially with, with what we see as potential for what we're talking about today in making a better connection to the property that may even enhance their redevelopment plans uh, should this move forward. And Councilmember Walsh, let me just, in part of these discussions, now we've all, we actually offered to work with Merlon Geyer and offer some, some charrettes and some designs about this. Ultimately, what they envision is a complete re-envisioning of the mall property and even possibly a gridding out of the, you know, knock down the current structure and, and uh, side roads. Now, they want to put housing on that, on that site, and they're talking about quite a number of units. The question is, what does that look like in regard, and, and what is the, what is the benefit to the city to enter into some sort of agreement with them on, on, on how a development agreement, which is what they would prefer. 
So whatever happens, there, there's, we would like to see a maximized use of the property for the benefit. But I think, um, uh, you know, there, there is no discussion about them parceling it off and selling it or anything. So we, we consider them all to be the CBD for the city, the central business district. All right. With, with that, I mean, with, with housing, I mean, are they one of the possibilities just strictly housing or is it going to be like first level retail and then uh, condos above it or, or what kind of things are they are they Brian, looking at? There have been several discussions about what the possibility would be. Our current code does require ground floor retail for any type of residential development. So even if they wanted to do just housing, they'd be obligated to provide at least a ground floor level of, of retail and um, associated parking with that. Uh, and the proposals that they've, they've shown us vary to a degree. Uh, lot, lots of housing, some retail, a mixture of both. And those discussions are, are ongoing. Right, and if it is if it is housing up above, I mean, are we able to restrict it so it'd be condos rather than apartments? Are we able to do anything like that? Uh, we could certainly have discussions with them as far as development agreement goes. So if you're talking about our code, there's no restriction, but um, with a property like that, I imagine that there would be some sort of development agreement uh, with them as, as how the property develops. The, the standards for developing that property when it comes to uh, public improvements, it's a big property, it's in downtown, the comprehensive plan calls for a, a lot of, uh, uh, and, our, and our development standards on the public work side require a lot of upgrades to uh, infrastructure. And so I, I can't imagine that property moving forward without a development agreement, which we would then be a party to, which you would mm -hmm. see and approve such an agreement and you could impose uh, whatever conditions would be appropriate and you know, with the legal confines of, of development agreements. Right. Uh, going on, a, a question about the, the possible dip there in 320th. Uh, you know, already, I mean, th there's challenges with heavy rain with, <laughs> with there being uh, flooding problems. I mean, with a, a dip there, I mean, is, is it feasible to be able to do that good of drainage in an area that's like that uh, where, anyway, I, I... Yeah, and that's, and that's a question that the, the very, those are the very kind of questions that we want answered. You know, the, this area has some water table issues, and so we want to get through that and identify whether or not this is even possible to, to do that. And that's hmm? the, what we're talking about with the funding that we're talking about is answering those questions. Well, okay. And also, just another definition of terms. Previously, you talked about a, a massing analysis. I, that's a term that I had never heard before until I was reading through this a, a few days ago. But what is meant by a massing analysis sure it's um, and, and all of my colleagues correct me but it's a it, it's effectively identifying the full potential of an area you know if you have a, a property that has zoning for you know who knows how high of a, of, a, of a building with what mixture of use it's identifying what that could look like both in terms of volume and use okay. it's about cobbling together the property that's what we you know when we bought TC1 where the pack is the council did that first with money from the state and then we, we actually owned TC2, and then we decided to turn it into the full four acres for the park. That was a decision the council made a couple of years later. Then the, the reclaiming of the, or the, the connecting it all together with the steps. So we've been kind of doing this incrementally, but, but uh, obviously it's about kind of cobbling it all together, and that's, that's really, that's, you're massing up property. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, thank you. I, I think that's it for the, for the moment. Uh, Councilmember Doby. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Fair. A couple questions. How much is in the budget for the TC3 study? What's the number? Uh, I believe it's 60, 70. It's 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 a it's a uh, we've checked with the mayor's office and it's uh, it's part of the adopted budget. Yeah. And I think it was sixty thousand. So there's sixty thousand dollars to do that study. That's what we're talking about. For TC3, yeah. Okay, and then. You know, since 1996, we've been talking about connectivity in our city, and that's what you're talking about, right? And it just seems to me that, I mean, a statement, then maybe you can answer it. We only own one piece of land downtown, the Target building. And we're painting this pretty picture of what we think connectivity is going to look like and what people want to do. So what are we going to do about zoning so the landowners actually want to sell their property to a developer to do something? Because that seems to me to be the bottom line issue. What's our zoning? How high are we going to go? You show pictures of Bellevue. Are we giving everybody the incentive to look like Bellevue? 
or are we going to say we want to be little garden apartments? Because um, I think we're kind of way off, quite honestly. I haven't been around, so I don't know. But it just seems that we're talking about designing something, and we don't own anything down there. So what's our incentives to the people to want to jump on and be part of it? <clears throat> yeah, and, and um, thank you for the question. Um, and uh, downtown redevelopment with so many different property owners um, <laughs> at the table, it sometimes is a difficult discussion. And so when we were identifying a place where we could focus the energy, so to speak, it's, it's on properties that we own. Like you mentioned, the pack, we also own the park. Uh, and as Keith mentioned, it's, it's, it's few property owners that we're actually talking about. So the, 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 the unpredictability in our minds is less if we're focusing on this corridor, uh, especially with Sound Transit at the table. They're a large property owner. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we've had discussions with the mall and then the property owner to the west there. So it's, it is a challenge, and I, I agree with you and acknowledge that. It's, it's focusing on this area in our minds is less of a challenge to at least start that effort to start that discussion. So, so it, totally agree it's going to be a difficult road ahead, but it's, it's less difficult if we focus on where there's fewer variables. But, but wouldn't we be smarter to change the zoning so people want to do something before we have this discussion? Yeah, and that's, that certainly could be part of it. The city center core zoning is, is pretty, um, we, we haven't, we haven't, well, we haven't heard a lot of concerns about it being too restrictive. You know, there's, as far as the uses go, it's, it's quite why, why open. Is nobody, why is nobody buying it to build high buildings like Bellevue if it's not restricted? Yeah, and I, I don't know if, it, if uh, identifying zoning as the issue, um, that's probably one of the questions that we need to answer. It could be a market condition uh, that is not Bellevue. Um, it, it's a, it could be that a factor as well. But so the zoning, as we've analyzed it, is not terribly restrictive for you know, if you want to talk about high rises, it's not terribly restrictive for that. Um, we, we perceive it more as a market condition, and so we're trying to create that market that's more favorable to that development happening. But certainly, if they're as part of the, the process that Cheney was referring to with the comprehensive plan update, that's, that's kind of over everything that we're talking about. That we're, you know, if we have no discussion tonight, we're still obligated to do that by 2024, which one of the chapters is looking at downtown and making sure that whatever vision we want is implemented by the code. If we want something that the code is not accomplishing, then we do need to change the code, and that would be a part of it. Okay. Um, another question. Another question I have is, um, you know, you talked about people wanting to be in downtown in 208. How has that changed in 2021 and 2020, and now with coronavirus? And you know, most of my colleagues I work with downtown have moved to the suburbs, or moved to New Mexico, or moved to places they've always wanted to live are we seeing is that an issue so um, <clears throat> um besides being a certified planner i'm also a certified economic developer and that's been a conversation about downtown office space uh, since the pandemic started and the general thinking right now is that the belief is that there's still a certain segment of our population that wants to live in dense, vibrant neighborhoods and to be close and in walkable situations. And so, so even though the office market may still change a little bit, the general uh, bet is that uh, most companies are going back to the office. It may look a little bit different, but they will, and people will still want to live in vibrant um, neighborhoods like we're hoping our downtown will be. And I tend to agree with you. I just uh, think that we need to be at more dense than we're talking about in your pictures. Okay, uh, Council, uh, Council, <coughs> excuse me, Deputy Mayor Honda and Council Member Walsh. Uh, let me ask before we go, you guys, we've got about eight or seven or eight minutes because uh, we need to be done uh, by six. Um, and Council Member Tran, did you have a question that we should get to? Uh, no, Mayor, thank you. I okay, just want to check. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. The TC3 three part property, the target property, does that include the property that was cut off for the hotel or is that a separate? It, it does uh, include. Yeah, we added it back in. Uh, yeah. to, to let everybody know, we had okay. partitioned Thank you. the parking lot between, we had partitioned that away for a hotel, then that got 
put back together with the property. So it's one piece of property again. Seven and a half acres, correct. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Great question. Councilmember Wolf. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about that, that we want to have a vibrant downtown neighborhood, which I agree wholeheartedly that that's, that would be the ideal. Uh, another concern that I have, though, is that with the, uh, the sound transit surplus property, I mean, if, there, if it's the requirement that 80% of that be for low-income housing, low-income housing and a vibrant downtown neighborhood seem like they're rather mutually exclusive. And, and they don't have to be, but the, certainly the development of a sound transit property is, is without question a factor in, in our discussion. Okay, thank you. Council President uh, Coachmore. Okay, so um, I like the idea of the dip. I think we can uh, obviously um, work out the uh, drainage problems. I was envisioning like Council Member Walsh having the tunnel filled with water, but I, that's not going to happen. Um, so, um, I guess, you know, I, I'm wondering if our council wants to postpone this discussion uh, just for a little while to have a regular meeting to have community members come in and state what they would like to see in the downtown. I mean, I think our comp plan goes up to, was it 30 stories now? I remember um, uh, Don Davidson was former mayor of Bellevue, and he told me 20 years ago, he, he was a dentist, they called him Dr. Duck. Donald Duck. Anyway, um, he said when they first built their first building in downtown Bellevue, it was 20 stories. First building, high rise, 20 stories, was Packard. And the people were ready to recall all the council members because it was so shocking to have it at 20 stories. So that's one of the questions I'd like to ask. I did go to a mayor's um, uh, conference at one point, and they said, don't go above 10 stories for your first high rise because it's too shocking for folks. So I guess what I'd like to know is from our community, if they're interested in a high rise, what they would want to see in this area, because it, it's not our money, it's theirs. And what do they want to see in their downtown? What do they want to see done with the pack? What do they want to see done with the park? What do they want to see in the downtown? Is it more um, shopping? Is it more um, after hours um, kind of um, places for our young people to go um, what is it that they're really interested in I, I guess I'm interested in hearing from the community sure and, and if I if I could just address this real quick so currently the limit with incentives is 200 feet high in the downtown it has been for quite some 20 time stories. Uh, 200 feet so however many stories so a little less than 20 so um, to your point about that you want to hear from the public about what they what they want to see for downtown we, we, we totally agree we, we think that's a um, a larger uh, geographic discussion than what we're talking about tonight and um, the, again the, the comprehensive plan and we probably should have em emphasized this a little bit more but we have to get the comprehensive plan updated by 2024 which includes an update to the downtown chapter so there whether we like it or not there's going to be discussions mm -hmm. about downtown that our uh, residents can participate in um, we, and that that will happen regardless of what you do tonight um, and regardless if you don't want that to happen it still has to happen um, so what we're talking about tonight is is just is taking some small steps tonight focused on this small area to at least start something for to redevelop downtown um, Deputy Mayor. I'm not comfortable voting on this tonight and for the reasons that council <coughs> president mentioned but also you know as excited as I am that we're gonna have a plan for downtown I this is something I've, I've read through your materials and I've talked to you quite frequently about this over the, the last few years. But I, I, if we had a motion tonight, I'd vote against it because I'm just not comfortable. And I, we need to have public input, even at this stage. I think it's really important. And um, so I would encourage the council not to uh, take, have a motion tonight and that we continue this and have another meeting on this where we can have public input and uh, get the public even at this stage involved okay really important I, okay uh, council member Dovey. can i just make one comment I, I i have no problem not voting on this but i think we need to get really really aggressive on what we're talking about and i think 2024 for the doing the comp plan is like too far out and if we're going to redevelop our downtown and we're going to try to do something, then let's make it a priority and get aggressive and have something that people want to have and developers want to do. Let's not just piecemeal it. 
I mean, that's just my comment. I mean, this should be something we should be talking about every meeting or in two weeks or whatever. That's right. Okay, so we're at 5.59 right now. We've got our executive session. Uh, so what I'm hearing is the consensus. Let's hold off on a vote. If we don't, we don't need to take, we don't need to make any motions and then we'll bring it back. Let me ask, is the, is the preference for, um, from the council to be at a special meeting or during a regular schedule, regular city council meeting? Regular meeting. Regular meeting? Anybody object to that? So it'll take a little, it'll take a little time, but that's where we'll probably get more, uh, more public comment. And we could do it at the beginning of the meeting, and that way public comment will, will capture uh, those comments for that input. Okay, we need to make sure we get to our uh, executive sessions. Uh, thank you, everybody. Great job. Really appreciate it, uh, uh, Keith and um, uh, Cheney and Brian. Thank you very much. Um, we will uh, recess to executive session for uh, pursuant to collective bargaining, pursuant to RCW 4230-1404B and item B, property acquisition, pursuant to RCW 4230-1101B. Uh, and that should be about 15 or 20 minutes. We're in recess for that purpose.